never been easier to build a DIY battery system. We live in the greatest time in history. Take a look at this fool. I mean, just look at him. Is that guy normal? I don't think he's all there. Oh, he is low IQ. An example of the lowest kind in our society. And if he can do it. And if he can do it. What does that say about you? So, just get up and do it. Are you really going to wait until a complete collapse of the electrical grid to worry about this? Are you really going to wait? What does that say about you? Just wait until all the lights go off and your precious TikTok goes dark. You oblivious fool, don't be that guy. Well, are you? Seize the moment. Build it, build it, build it. Build the power wall. All right, video time. Let's talk about this 48 volt battery that we're working on. Okay, this is a custom box that we're building for the LED60 cells that you can find on Jack35, right? This one is a dual purpose box. You will be able to use it like that, flame flat like that as a, a rack mount unit, but you could also will be able to stack it up and hang it on the wall. And so what we're doing here is we're making custom stuff like this printed circuit board that serves as a uh, bus bar. Right, and then the BMS that is gonna go in here and then you can control it via the things over here. So anyways, let's talk about how to connect the BMS into that, right? Um, so here's the BMS that we've decided. It's a Jabiba one. That is the number right there. Uh, I will share the uh, link to this. It's about a hundred bucks. It has full features. This is the reason why we chose this one is because it matches kind of a, the whole industry is kind of standardizing, right? It's becoming standard. And so I'm not gonna go into too much detail into the specs of this BMS. You can look it up, uh, you click on the link and then go, when you guys buy it, you can do the thing, right? So anyways, but to connect it, we have this connector right here. And this is the benefit of using this printed circuit board is that it kind of simplifies the whole connection. There's 18 wires here. For first time users, this could be daunting. And even for experienced builders, you know, just handling 18, that's the worst part. My least favorite part about batteries, it's the BMS leads, the balance leads. It usually becomes a rat's nest and it's just confusing, you know, trying to troubleshoot it, trying to find out. So anyways, this simplifies this whole thing, right? And so all of those connections end up right here in this tiny connector that it's really easy to use. So what you have to do is you have to cut cables that come in because they come really long. People usually don't have a nice little connector they can connect to, so they just have to run all the way to the cell terminals and stuff, right? So you'll have to cut about 200 millimeters. Here's a picture of what I did and make sure you don't cut the black cables because those are tem uh, temperature sensors. So here's how you connect. There's four connectors. One is the number one through four. The number one starts with the white cable and it goes into B minus here. And you get to the yellow and then the red and then the brown and then the blue. And they go sequential in sequence. Then you go to connector number two here. The same thing, you start with the white one, yellow, red, and then brown. But here is where it gets a little confusing. This. BMS has 18 wires, so there's 18 cables in here, but the 16 cell battery pack only requires 17 balance leads. And so there's an extra wire in there, right? I don't know the reason for that. I think maybe this, this will support 17 cells instead of 16 cells, but we're only using 16 because that's the, the norm, that's the standard. And so what you will have to do is you'll have to combine one of the, these two cables into going to the same port. Now, the only way that I was able to find out is to ask the actual, uh, the seller of this BMS. And then they sent me a little diagram that I will share with you. And it's very confusing because they don't make it very clear. You'd have to literally just kind of go through all the connections and be like, oh, there it is. Uh, and so it's right between uh, connector number two and connector number three, right? So the brown cable of connector two with the white cable from connector three, those have to go together into uh, C9 on the board there. And then they go sequential from there on. The, you know, you follow with the yellow, the red, the brown, and then the blue. And then the last connector start again with the white, yellow, and then red, and then brown, and then you'll have the same amount. Now in the future, I might change the design to match those. So I'll put four little connectors in here, you know, and label one, two, three, and four. And then you'll just be able to, oh, this is a connector number one. And then maybe I'll even write the, the, 
you know, the, the wire colors in there, right? Now, I might do that. Uh, the problem is that all of these, you know, I, I don't control the batch of these. So I think maybe in the future, they might change the colors or they might change the thing or, or there's several versions of, of uh, BMSs that can be used. So then people might get confused and think like this might not work with their BMS, which is not true. This will work with any BMS, right? As long as you can, you know, connect the cables in the right places. But I'm just trying to make it easier and stuff. And that's why I'm making this video for this particular BMS, which will be linked. And maybe we'll even carry this BMS uh, and sell it with the kit. It's going to be that easy to connect, right? Uh, and then it might even be easier in the future if I change the design here. Uh, I might make some of these custom to different kinds of BMSs if there's enough requests from people. I know that there's several versions and several manufacturers that make this BMS uh, or, a, or a very typical BMS that is similar to that, right? So for right now, this is how you connect this BMS to this uh, bus bar. Uh, does it have? Yeah, 1.6 version 1.6 of this if i do make changes then it'll be a different version we'll make another video and stuff so let's connect that uh into the battery that we have up in the wall okay so here are the batteries that are on the wall this is the original version the production version of this uh, board of course we need the one that has those changes right so that we could do this right so those are green and so i just put these up here because they're red and just i want to take a picture because this is how they're eventually going to look like they're going to be red but they're going to have all the changes so let's put the uh the green ones up here and then uh then we can install the bms right down here Uh, how we can paint this thing there's not gonna be a proper way to paint obviously because there's a proper way to do things but I just want to see what is achievable by just a regular Joe like me which is buying a spray can and then just do it <laughs> Super windy out here is probably not the best. <laughs> Thank you. 
tiny little thing that I still have to fix. And I, I think I just did it on this last latest uh, version that I order is that you see how it fits flush right here, but it, then it splits up like that. And the reason that is because I make the base the same width as the, the front, right? The top. And so obviously there's the thickness of the material. So that's why it steps out like that in the back on both sides. Now you could put the screws in there cause I made these holes, uh, you know, with a little bit of room, but still, you know, it's not perfect. So I think what I ended up doing is because I couldn't make this, the base smaller, I just made the next top that the cover a little bit wider. And then uh, this thing is also a little bit wider. So I just made the battery a tiny bit wider the thickness of that material so now it's gonna look even well here's a moment of truth let's see if this will turn on uh, okay there's lights down here I thought the screen would come on but I guess you have to press it so let's look at a uh, menu pack voltage is 50 volts right now uh, current capacity temp cell info okay so v1 to v4 oh they're a bit the, look at this one's a three three volts and this one's a 3.2 so it's not balanced uh let's see there we go 32 three th so there's a lot of threes and there's a couple of 32s there's a 29 uh, 3,000, uh, 3 volts, 32, 3.2, uh, 28, and then a 3.2 3 the rest. Yeah, this battery needs to be balanced, obviously, so. But, you know, these cells, again, where did I grab these cells from? Several places. <laughs> I think these ones will be more even because those are coming off the boxes. These are cells that I think I had on my bench and I was doing stuff with them. So that's what happens. So what do you guys think about this? I mean, that's one way to make them disappear. Look at that white on that white wall. I don't know if I like it. Maybe the next one I'll paint it black and then see what it looks like and then we'll We'll decide, but definitely, yeah, those are the two main colors. I had white just sitting there. Uh, I don't have black, so that's why I just painted that one today. And it was it was the rusty one, that one that was gonna work. These are obviously, uh, uh, this is not a tutorial, right? A step-by-step -step tutorial, obviously, because I'm still figuring this out. So I'm putting them up here, and I'm just figuring things out, what's gonna be easy, what's gonna be hard what how i'm going to make a video explaining how to make it right like i'm i don't want to say the wrong things and obviously uh putting the cells out of here it's a bit sketchy but it's doable and there's some advantages you can do it by yourself you don't need a second person but then putting the bms over here oh my god that was such a pain and uh i don't think i want to repeat that on these maybe i think i'm going to bring a cart we'll get this down i'll get some help you know then we'll put a cleat this one's hanging on a cleat and then um and then just plop it up there i think that's the way to go it's, it's the way easier so the cleats cost a few extra dollars right i don't know like eight ten dollars or something i think it's well worth the the money to be able to do that because uh well this one for example if i want to remove it from the wall you kind of have to take it apart you have to take the cover off then take the, the screws off from the back of this thing and then the thing comes off right these ones too now this one all you would have to do is take a couple of screws that hopefully are going to be on the bottom i think i'm going to put like a little bracket here that you'll be able to put a screw from the outside and then it won't go up and then that's it you'll remove it uh and so definitely installing them it's a lot easier uh, other than the fact that you will need a second person because these are like about 80 pounds um but yeah this is uh this is just the first one uh, i'm gonna do man this is kind of weird right shouldn't this thing turn on the screen okay so if you turn it off yeah the screen stays on this is weird this is separate than the actual bms on off button this can stay this can turn on while the bms is off and the bms 
can come on without the screen being on. So, huh, it's very interesting. Uh, yeah, stay tuned. I, I'm gonna do this because I have to do this. This is our warehouse here and stuff, but definitely I'm learning how to do these the best way. And then once I figure it out, I'll make a tutorial with the parts already figured out, all the holes in the right place, the dimensions, you know, correctly. Right now there's a little bit, you know, and I think this is just like first gen or first revision, you know, second revision and then third revision. And even I have another one that's coming that I've made some changes to it. And, uh, and so definitely this one wasn't the easiest. I think they're gonna get easier as I'm putting them down there, right? But there we go. Just a little quick update on how this project is going. Thank you.